Okay, so the question is, how did this head and this goose and this lung and this bone turn to stone? And here is the answer. All right, this is extremely simple and totally missed by geologists. These stones are what they call feldspar coated. Feldspar coats these stones. Inside, though, you see that? That's basalts. And they all have the same sort of thing. Inside, they are no longer feldspar. And this lung was DNA tested. It's human lung, and it's solid stone. Now, this is the key. It's a nucleophilic substitution. What that means is during a wet, salty flood, these became invaded by a nucleophile is an electron-rich species that reacts with an electron-poor species. Substitution implies one group replaces the other. So you have a leaving group and a substitution group. So the leaving group leaves the carbon and a new one comes in and it takes over and stabilizes it. The leaving group was never stable in the first place. Not a single molecule in your body is stable right now. A hundred percent of it is giving and taking giving and taking. Give, take out the trash, bring in some oxygen. Take out this garbage, bring in some vitamin C or whatever it is, back and forth. Enzymes, catalysts, continuous cycling of electrons, leaving groups and substituting groups. And they only substitute and leave very, very quickly because in four or five minutes you're dead. <laughs> your blood continuously circles. And if it stops circling, you don't get your oxygen, you don't get your nutrition, you, you die. So, what is in your blood? <laughs> right there. Transition metals. And what does transition metals mean? They can absorb deep electron levels and carry them over and drop them off and carry them over and pick up and drop off and pick up and so forth, back and forth. That is the process of life. And this I will show you quickly in the microscope. What happened to Jim's head? Jim's head was was transitioned in this exact process, as all my mud fossils are. All right, you see what we're looking at here? This is the lung, DNA certified human. That is blood down there. And it is identical to what you see here on Jim's head with the black and the red. That is virtually identical, and here it is in the microscope. All right? So that's, that's what was coming out of Jim's head. It's, that is what's called iron oxides. I agree. I agree. But it's, that's not, it's because it's blood. And it's both of the sides of the blood, the oxygenated blood and the deoxygenated. The same thing that happens in lungs. This is where you transfer the, the um, oxygen and get rid of the carbon dioxide. And this is only reason this is black and this is red is this is what's called hematite, this is magnetite. Magnetite has one, one less oxygen. And it, it bonds differently in oxygenation. This is a different oxidation state and has an extra um, oxygen and it comes out red and it stays powdery-ish. The black turns hard. The black turns very very hard. The red stays stays iron basically and that's why they they use the hematite to make iron. This is the best stuff to, to turn into iron and all of this is blood. <laughs> and we're loaded with it too. And this is a bone, and you see the black in that bone? That's a bonehead. Right? And that, it's got one tiny little taste right there of bone left to that whole, whole bone. But this is the bone black that's inside. It's the marrow and the same thing that is exuded from that bone. All right, this goes back over oh, five, six, almost seven years ago, actually. And this was um, the CAT scans and the DNA test. That's that big fingertip I showed before. And um, I, show, I show all the bone anatomy that goes along with it and how the bone structure works. And uh, then that and the tip, which is this, um, the apical tuft. I have another one now here somewhere. It is right here. This this is an eroded apical tuft. See it? It even has a little uh, triangle at the bottom and everything. That ball is one of the balls that locks into all of these different holes and they run down to straps. That's an apical tuft. I have so much of this stuff, it's crazy. This is the fingertip 
looking at it on the side. That's the fingernail where it is. And this like little notches are where the tendons lock in. And this is underneath, and that's where that apical tuft sits right here. That's the underneath, and the, like the tip tip is right here. And that's where your, all your tendons lock in on the end. Sorry, Caesar. This is the back, and that's one of the tendons, and that's the other side tendon, and that's where the bone is, and it's offset, set, which means that's a thumb. Your thumb, the bone is offset, and not exactly in the center. So this had to be a thumb, is my, in my opinion, because that's the bone. And um, these, see, one of them's white, and one of them's black looking. The, the black is from right here. That's the black blood. This one here, the red blood runs right out usually, so you end up with no color or, or red. Sometimes it ends up red. This was the CAT scan showing. Now, this was a Jesse Grant and Associates. A fabulous job. Nice, nice, nice people. This shows the, all the blood vessels that run up through the fingertip. This is the back of the fingertip, and all you can barely see is this shadow of a bone. You see, remember I said it was offset? It's not right in the middle, it's offset. And that's the bone. And, and it came out, they did a really nice job. But you can't get, you, you really don't see all that much in the CAT scan. And of course I showed the hand, this is the hand that it came from, that big fingertip and the bones, I got all kinds of stuff from the knuckles and things. And uh, then I go on to show the different anatomy that corresponds to my stuff and this was the bone ball and the tendons and all that anyway what I just showed you <laughs> it's it's very very hard to dismiss this and it's time to look at it as a reality not just to just walk away from it and continue to teach the things they're teaching which to, it, to, to not investigate this is, is a tr absolute tragedy really it is for the students absolutely Okay, wrap it up is Jim's head is totally authentic. That is the flesh pushed away from the cartilage of the nose. Nobody carves anything like that. That is caved in. His head was smashed by something. And that is the red and black blood, which is totally normal in mud fossils. And this is actually a weaved cap. And you can slide a playing card up underneath between where the cap and the head meet. It is it's totally authentic and it should be looked at. It was discounted literally on TV in 20 seconds and that was the end of that. It really caused a hell of a problem with our research. But all of this stuff now, I have so much stuff, it can't be denied anymore. Even I have lungs that are half, half coated with the pleura and half, half gone. And again, flat as a pancake because they were all in a flood. Same with my buddy Caesar. He was in the flood too. That's why he's flat on one side is, and the other side is good. They all seem to do that. Well, I mean, they're all wet and sloppy and flat in the wetness. That's why. Some of them, like the bones like this, were inside of fleshy parts. The fleshy parts deteriorated and got, got away and the bones came out and turned into stone. Most of them were semi-eroded. This is really very, very exact, perfect. And they even have the periosteum on there, that little coating, you see that? Little triangle. That's, that's a wrapping. Wrapped it just like a crescent roll. <laughs> they used to call it the tunica. And everything is wrapped in tunica, which is nothing more than the membrane. Now it's called interstitium. And this is what this is. This is interstitium. That's interstitium. Only it's a pleura on a lung. Even the feathers of a goose is exactly like the fe feather, like your skin. It's the same stuff. It's your membrane. It coats you away from the rest of the world or away from one side of the good stuff. Keep the bad stuff on the other side. And in that membrane lives a bacteria. That's a whole other issue. But this was real should be looked into and all of this stuff should be looked into if i was a student i would be asking my professor to look into this why am i being taught this isn't real it's up to you